you know, the pros and the back. Crazy thing so many families. I mean, they have a ton of time to talk about it. was nice to think. Okay. All right. I will call the Wednesday, August 14th, 2024 meeting of the Monona Park and Rec Board for order. Look, we have everyone here except for Pat Howell. Um, since we do have another new member, um, I don't know if you heard that Tom Evans decided to serve you long enough, I guess, and wanted to jump off the committee. So, um, we had Aaron Embry as a new new member. So why don't we just do the same thing we did a couple of recently? And Ginger is going to briefly go around and say who we are and how long we've been on and what we can say. So I'll start. Um, my name is Doug Wood. I'm the chair and alder of the Parks Board. I've been on the council for, for 25 years and on the park school. Since the original land grant. I wrote that. <laughs> um, so yeah, I think I think you'll find it's a good group. So the pressure's on that. Uh Jeff, you uh sure, yeah, we kind of introduced talked a little bit uh, before the meeting Jeff is about 15 years or so on uh, the park board. Welcome. I'm Kelly Slack with Slack Attack. I don't know, I've been on 10 minutes or a long time. I uh, do the holiday fantasy and lights, and I did the normal Memorial Day parade. And, I, and you grew up in the normal. Yeah, I did. I'm a lifer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. Air. <laughs> I got to meet Aaron last week and we went camping together. Um, so Aaron actually came and introduced himself to me and informed me of the news. So it was fun to catch up with him that way. Uh, Aaron, uh, just to kind of recap, um, I came around 10 years with you, Kelly. I think I came out around the same time. Um, and, um, you know, like I said, it was a very Sit here, Pat. Yeah, and we get to talk a lot about face. So, um, my experience at that very good table is still more than what it put the background. My knowledge, like, I told you the thing, I guess. Um, so, yeah, nice to have you on board. Good. Yeah. Hi, Aaron. I'm Ginger. I'm the second newest board member. I've been on just like a couple of months now. Um, love it so far. It's great. I work at Jody Mental Health Center. It's a behavioral health clinic. Um, community agency, but I do client work and professional development there, but I used to work in communities. Um, yeah. welcome. Thank you. Really appreciate it. Um, you want to give a quick intro or you just want to go ahead and pass your point? Yeah, uh, Patrick Dilla, uh, Alder, also co chair of the committee, um, owns Salvatore's tomato plant, uh, so business restaurant background, um, that sort of thing. So, uh, anyway, that's uh, mm -hmm. uh, hi, Pat Hall. Um, Besides so being on the board for a long time, um, Monona resident for a long time, just teaching the district and um, also on the Friends of San Daniel Board. And Rachel, can you, can you hear me now? Yep, barely, but we, yeah, got, right. we got you. We'll be quiet and we can hear you. <laughs> okay. uh, Rachel Groman, um, one of the relatively newer members. Um, I've been on about maybe five ish years. Um, been in Monona as a resident for about 10 years, um, originally from the East Coast, though. Um, and um, d my job by day is uh, I do health, federal health policy work. It's very dry. <laughs> and it's actually requiring me what, why I'm on Zoom, because I have to hang up a little early today. But great to meet you. Yeah, thanks. Uh, Aaron. Well, thank you for that. Um, my name's Aaron Embry. I've been a resident of Manola since 09. Got three little boys, Carlos, Silas, and Leo, four, seven, and nine. Married to my wife, Emily, and we both went to UW here. She graduated from the Park and uh, Recreational Resource Management Forestry <laughs> Program. But I've been uh, working in mostly banking and finance for most of my career. So. I have a passion, but uh, you can out of living here in, in uh, banking. I'm currently employed with Lake Ridge Bank, uh, formerly Monona Bank. I'm at eight years. I'm um, what you call like a market manager. I also 
put up our consumer land use division. So um, when I'm not doing that, I'm also a certified dive master and instructor. Um, obviously love recreating, love the outdoors, love nature. And uh, as being a Canadian born and immigrated to the United States in 2000, well, 1998, technically, but then moved away to the Caribbean and came back, um, you know, have this sense of civic duty and responsibility since taking that oath and slowly been easing my way into that with all my other responsibilities. So love this community, love giving back. Um, I have a lot to learn from all of you and um, just trying to bring a neutral stance and do my best to keep up. So great. Well, thank Thanks. you. Jake, you want to say well, yes. Yeah. Oops, uh, Neil Stexley, City Administrator. I've been here for just over a year, so uh, I, I'm still on a learning curve a little bit, although I think the honeymoon's officially over in one year, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Um, uh, so, uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, I think you know, trial by fire, but even from the best, you know, and then you guys haven't changed the locks on me yet, so things are going pretty well. So, obviously, we're just, you know, helping, you know, kind of administer day to day operations here. Working on the budget, working on an operating referendum, working on our capital budgets, uh, all those kind of fun, sexy, exciting things uh, that each of our departments have to endure every year at this time. So glad to have you on board. Right. Thanks. Jay. Can you share roughly where you live so we can put you in the department? Yeah, definitely. So uh, I live on Ella, or some say Ella Terrace. It's a little through street parallel with Panther uh, in the Manoni Hills district. And um, yeah, we've been there since that. otherwise known as a park desert area. Yeah, we've got Angel 21 and all we walk through there. But we like I said, super impressed with the parks and everything that it does for the public services in general. And we, we spend our time in all of them. And Aaron, Jake Anderson, we've passed many times uh yeah. and pick up at multiple locations. Yeah. Um, I've been with the city since 2008, uh, moved in in 2016. And fun fact is that my youngest son is sometimes coined as a mini Silas. So yeah. they are uh, the blondest <laughs> of blonde uh, boys and sometimes they, they look very similar. So it's, it's an interesting. He talks about actually your son a lot. So do a good job. So there we go. Now we're all... The new family is together. The band is back. <laughs> Let's wow. roll. Okay, we don't have minutes, correct? I do not have minutes. It will be for the next meeting. Apologies. And we don't have any appearances for anything not on the agenda. There's no unfinished business. So new business 5A is discussion and recommendation of Adam's outdoor sign proposal at his park. So... I'll introduce Tom Hickey, who's here from Adams Outdoor Signs. In your packet um, is information, the kind of application and what is looking at. Historically, this was presented to this board in the city in 2010, so quite a while ago, at the same location at Acoustic Park. Um, there are several committees that would need to sign off and get approval before um, seeing this to fruition. Um, including plan commission and kind of last time, just for history purposes, we did approve or recommend for approval, um, the sign location in the park. Um, at the discussion internally with uh, Neil and Tom and our legal team, there was a, a, a initial fee that was discussed, a, a yearly fee that would be paid into the um, general fund. So it's a pretty significant you know, fee rent basis. Um, at least from my perspective anyway, right off it, as I said in the agenda, that the location of the sign would be, if, if you know where the football field is, the south end zone, as you're looking at it, just to the right of it, but on the Nova Drive. So you would have a view of it from the football field, but the way these are, they're kind of like a tri <gasps> triangle shape. Excuse me. And you'd have the back to it. So just a little bit of the background. Um, and before it would, be considered at plan commission and ultimately city council. This is the first stop. So, did I miss anything, Neil? No, no, right. no, no, no. Let's turn it over to 
to Tom then. Um, so like you uh, mentioned, Tom Hickey with uh, Adams Outdoor, um, really appreciate your time today. And I kind of want to go through this presentation that I believe you all have in your uh, packet, but I also have extra copies if needed, um, kind of going over our proposal and some details <clears throat> and helping to get some feedback from you guys to kind of, you know, get this in, in a better place. Um, so Adams, we are offering uh, to pay the city uh, $80,000 in base rents, as well as kind of an escalator that would increase that uh, over time to the city to build this back-to-back -back, uh, digital sign in Augusto Park. Um, we're proposing a 10-year lease with a 10-year renewal after that lease. And then this is a billboard, so primarily the sign would be used for commercial advertising, um, but would also be used uh, to advertise local events that the city would be uh, putting on, as well as uh, organizations through our uh, Adams Collaborative Program uh, that we do here in the Dane County area. Um, so next, uh, put it up there, so I'll wait just one second. Um, so we do have a, a site plan kind of showing the location where we would uh, you know, be hoping to place the sign. Um, like you mentioned, it is um, kind of the same location as we had proposed about 10 years ago. Um, and our thought process is with this location uh, specifically is that we kind of avoid some of the wetland area that is uh, kind of on the western uh, side of the property, but also then um, you know, minimizing impact to the park as much as possible and also kind of minimizing visibility from the park uh, because of kind of the trees and the herb that would be between uh, the park and the cellar. Uh, so yes, this kind of shows it and we, uh, you know, we understand that there's some old trees in the area and we've kind of walked the site with, with Neil and Jake and understand that those are um, some trees that have been planted and more sensitive. So we're, uh, you know, we won't touch those trees at all. Those would actually kind of help it sort of blocking the view of the sign uh, from the park. Uh, so that's kind of the placement we're looking at. Uh, next is a couple of renderings that would kind of show from the road what the sign might look like, um, just to give an idea. So this would be, you know, as you're driving uh, the east down the belt line. Um, and the next is driving from the other side. Uh, so, you know, this kind of shows that uh, we're really looking at, you know, the edge of the property, five foot set back from the right of the line. Um, and just to give an idea of what the sign would actually look like from the road. Uh, so next really kind of a big piece of this is how we would access the sign as well as build the sign. Um, so you see it on the next page, but we are proposing to actually build kind of a, an access road or path that would go uh, from the property directly west of the park and then kind of loop back towards the sign. Uh, this is something we would pay for and build um, and this is our, I guess, preferred method, just because we feel that this would, um, you know, be most, I guess, respectful of the park and, you know, uh, really prevent us ever interfering with park activities if we were to have to do maintenance on the sign. Um, and it was just kind of the, the easiest path for us to kind of um, always be, you know, access to the sign. Now, one great thing about the digital sign is we wouldn't actually have to you know go out there every week like our regular billboard signs and replace the ad that's on top of there um, but we do feel that this access path would kind of be the least resistance now if this doesn't work and if this is something the uh or is not a fan of uh something we have done in the past is kind of using heavy duty matting um and then we would kind of go through straight down the middle of the park between the two fields um, and drive the machinery on top of that matting that would prevent damage done to the park. Um, and you know, obviously the matting would go away after the, the sign is built. Um, but we do worry that kind of the way the park is sloped in the middle, that the land there is a little bit soft and we wouldn't quite want to you know, put machinery on that. And we think that access road uh, from the Western side might be the best option. Uh, however, there would we would need an access easement uh, from that property owner uh, to the west in order to do that method. Um, so once again, this kind of outlines the path of where we would go, kind of you know next to the football fields, um, but not on top of it. It's kind of creating that path, and obviously, you guys, you know, once we built it, this path would be able to be used by anyone. Uh, so next page, kind of talking about the build of the sign. Uh, so this blueprint kind of shows what the sign would look like and kind of shows that sort of V shape with the two sign faces that Jake talked about. Um, each face would be 14 feet by 48 feet. 
and overall the sign uh, would be 35 feet at the highest point. So at the top of the, you know, very top of the, the face would be at 35 feet. Um, as far as building the sign, materials take, you know, roughly about eight weeks to arrive. Um, and once we have those and, you know, we have the okay, and after we would, um, you know, figure out access and those things, it would take, uh, you know, a week from start to finish to actually build the sign. Um, so once again, just, you know, doing as much as we can to limit any interference with the park or anything like that while building the site. Uh, next, and obviously this is a, you know, big piece we want to get feedback from you all on is kind of the, the landscaping and vegetation. Um, some vegetation would have to be removed to create uh, visibility for the sign. Um, we have walked through the area with, with Jake and Neil and kind of pointed out and they're pictured after um, some kind of cottonwood trees that are right up against the edge of the property um, that would need to be removed to create visibility for the sign and also then removing some of this kind of brush that is out there um, to create room for the sign and also create more visibility. Um, we, you know, propose for each of those cottonwood trees that are up at, you know, at the border of the property for any of those that are removed, we would, um, plant another tree in the park wherever, um, at the parks within the city's discretion where they would like it and what type of tree. Um, and we also would plan to replace some of kind of that brush, uh, with a no-mo grass or something, um, you know, that is low maintenance, but would kind of eliminate some of that invasive brush and also kind of open up view. Uh, of the park from the belt line as you're driving by. Um, so next is kind of some pictures that sort of highlight some of the, the area we're talking about. Um, so yeah, it's really this stuff that's up against the very edge of the property and kind of up against the road. Um, those cottonwood trees is kind of, you know, what we're mainly looking at and some of the brush over there. Um, but once again, not touching uh, the oak trees that um, have been planted that would be kind of behind the side. Uh, where we're proposing. Uh, so if you go to the next picture, this kind of highlights some of the brush. So once again, the, the trees kind of at the very forefront of the image on the left, those, you know, should be fine. It's more of the brush that's very much in front of it um, is, is the type of stuff we would kind of look to remove and replace with something, some sort of low maintenance grass or pollinator or something like that. Um, so next page, we work up with Herman Landscape to kind of come up with this sort of plan uh, for immediately around the sign. And once again, this is the, the type of stuff we would uh, you know love your feedback on. Um, so you know, once again, highlighting at the top those those trees that would would remain and those would be uh, those would stay. We would not need to touch those. Um, but just kind of immediately around the sign, uh, the landscaper kind of felt like something you know stuff that is low maintenance that would have a lot of sprawl. Um, and not too much height uh, is that it would interfere with the sign, but would kind of make the area immediately around the sign look nice, uh, as well as then highlighting that the area around the sign, uh, kind of outside of that border, would be replaced with kind of a no mow grass where needed, where brush would need to be removed. And then lastly, once again, just kind of highlighting the sign content, you know, primarily used for uh, commercial advertising. Um, but we also have kind of a not local nonprofit program where we highlight uh, area nonprofits as well as obviously making the sign uh, available to you all for events. And we have, um, we do this in the past with other municipalities in Dane County. We have arrangements with the city of Sun Prairie and the city of the forest that when they're having events, they have an ad that runs week long up to the event at no cost to them. We help, help them design it if needed and all those types of things. Um, and then also the sign, uh, one nice thing with these digital signs is we do make them available uh, to local law enforcement for things like Amber Alerts and those type of things. Um, so with that, that is what I have here now. I thought we'd be happy to answer any questions and hear any feedback uh, you all have. So I have a couple of questions or comments that um, I think on some of the, the items, <laughs> will need like we specify a percentage of time that the mm -hmm. city will be guaranteed mm -hmm. access to it in the agreement. Yes, that is yeah. something we'd be happy to drop. Yes, we you know a written uh that's the easiest way to do it. I mean in some cases we do have kind of by request, but the easiest way to do it is kind of uh, have it written up, you know, a year's worth of time and you know when it would be used, that type of stuff. 
And then the on the tree replacement, I assume, well, you assume the planning commission is going to have to approve that as well. I was going to say also have the park director have, um, I guess, the final say mm -hmm. over what gets planted. Yes, of course. We'd be happy to take any recommendations on what, what and where you would like planted uh, for replacement. And if you answered my, my uh, one of my other questions was that the pathway will be open. Your access road will, could function as a pathway to reach that section. Yes, correct. Yeah, at some point in time we heard um, that that the Park Service said was interested in kind of a path around that whole area. Um, you know, that's that'd be something we you know that could definitely connect to whatever else would like to go. But yes, that path we would have open for people to use. Okay. Do you know what material that would be? Uh, the path. I don't, we have looked out for some quotes, um, but we don't have a set uh, material. Okay. It does need to be pretty handled. Yes, it would, yeah, so it would need to be pretty sturdy to handle uh, mm -hmm. the machinery that would need to, to drive on it immediately to build the sign. Um, so that would be, you know, kind of our main concern is just making sure it can handle it without doing any, any damage to any surrounding. Uh, how often? Uh, would that pathway be moved in? How often do you have to move that? So this is the nice thing with the digital signs is, you know, once it's built, I mean, we, the ops team checks them like once every six months, unless an issue comes up. Um, obviously we change the ads, you know, in our, by computer and those type of things, but really it's only by incident. And then the sign faces themselves need to be replaced roughly about every 13 years. Um, so as far as a full replacement, sending the trucks back out there and those things, that would only happen once every 13 years. Um, but as far as a couple ops members walking out there and making sure the electrical is working, that would kind of happen by incident or they're kind of routine checks, you know, a couple times a year. Yeah. Are you sorry, Don? I've got several questions, so go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> so when I we saw the 80000 uh, that's a lot of money. Mm -hmm. great. Uh, I have no information. I have no knowledge when it comes to advertisements. Mm -hmm. and so how much revenue will you be getting from the sign? Um, it, you know, it's hard to project. Um, then that'd be something I need to go to our sales team and check on, to be honest. I could get that information back to you. We do have kind of a comparable sign nearby um, that, that does, you know, fairly well. But I, I can get you those numbers for sure. I just don't know them off the top of my head. And then kind of along with mm -hmm. the money part of it, you had mentioned, because it, it says a 10-year lease, mm -hmm. but then you mentioned an estimated. So how yes. much of a percent of an estimate would that be each year? So we haven't, I guess, put anything like set in stone, but we have talked roughly about a 3% escalator, I believe was the last number we, we kind of talked about. Um, so that's what we'd be looking at. Um, okay, um, questions are several. One um, has to do with the size. Mm -hmm. How does that compare to other billboards that are along the, um, the belt line? That's a good question. That's the same size. Everything on the belt line, besides the ones that look noticeably smaller, are our standard kind of 14 by 48 size, which is what you typically see on roads that are above 50, 55 miles an hour. Okay. Okay, yeah, I'm sitting in this room, imagine. Right, yeah, so yeah. this is not 48 feet mm -hmm. wide, and that's probably about 14 mm -hmm. feet there. So these are big, big signs, but I wanted to see how it compared. Yeah, of course, yeah. It's If you drive down the belt line, that's the size you'll also be looking at. Mm -hmm. how, high, how high will the signs be? So the very top of the sign would be at, we're proposing 35 feet, which is what the county, uh, the county limit. Yeah. Uh, so that kind of related to to that with the with the size, um, the businesses that you advertise, you mm -hmm. have restrictions on some of that, so we wouldn't find all the gentlemen's clubs advertisements. Yes, um, yes, I can get you more information on like our official restrictions, but I will say that it's something that I feel Adams does better than other operators in the state as far as keeping kind of those ads out of the market. Um, and we do things, uh, you know, mostly it's for the businesses we work with where we have um, signs on their property. We'll, we'll work with, uh, to do advertising restrictions as far as, you know, 
not compet not advertising competitors on their properties as well as things like gentlemen's club singles type of thing. We would be happy to write that into the agreement. Okay, yeah, so we could have some input. Correct. Can you restrict political advertising? That is, I think we can restrict it on that location. Obviously, we do some political advertising in the area. I believe that is something we could look into um, restricting for that site. I think that's something we do. I can't like promise it officially, but I know that's something um, we do restrictions on certain sites um, based on need. So I think that's something we could look at. Well, we need to run that time with past the city attorney as well. So I think if if anything, if we do allow that, we have to allow equal access to mm -hmm. all candidates. So it's, yeah, I mean, just, yeah, we would need whatever is proposed. I think we definitely need our legal counsel to take a look at it. Then um, question. another question has to do with the um, amount of time and frequency mm -hmm. for uh, promoting local mm -hmm. e events. Um, is, you know, is there a percentage of time or? Is the board divided so that maybe local events are fl flashing well and another sign is up there? How, how does that work? So uh, typically the way these digital signs work is they have kind of eight slides on, eight slides per side, and then each slide is up for, uh, I believe it's six seconds at a time, or it's kind of state mandated. So what we generally do with municipalities is, you know, uh, they become one of the eight slides for a week leading up to, I'm just speaking on kind of the DeForest one is at the top of my mind, which agreement is written a little differently, but with DeForest, they get uh, a week leading up to um, the event uh, for one event per month per year, if they have an event. Um, so, you know, if they have a Halloween party at the end of October at their library or something, that ad would run for the last week of October. And then if they have something else the next month, that ad would run for the week leading up to that event and by request. But each kind of is written up for one per month per week of the event. So neighboring communities like McFarland or Forest, can they advertise with promote on that sign as well? Or is it just the knowing? So if we were doing this with you guys, you guys would just you would be the ones that would get it for free as far or as part of the agreement on the sign. Now if McFarling reached out to us and paid for an advertisement on the sign, we would, you know, we would give that to them, but it would it wouldn't be like the agreement you would have. Then my last question, Jake, this might be one that you can answer better, but uh, just in terms of as you take the cottonwood trees down and do some replanting and and all of that, one of the things when um, Ahuska Park was first in the process of becoming a park mm -hmm. it was a landfill, one of the concerns was the the sound from the bell line mm -hmm. too. Mm -hmm. So that berm and all the plantings that were around there were intentional to keep the sound mm -hmm. at the minimum for the ball field. So what's being looked at right now mm -hmm. uh, does that impact sound in in what way i mean everything south of so just this is a good picture thank you that's a good question yeah um this area right in here we mow and so you can actually walk behind the berm is um further up and so how it kind of works is there's two berms there's one berm that goes around the football field and then to the south of that is kind of where we have a nice full grove. Um, behind that is this clump of vegetation in here. And so it's a little bit off the side of the football field. I would say as a parent of a tackle football player, we don't have as much sound disruption at a football game as they do in the baseball field with like the outfield noise from uh, outfielders trying to listen to a ball and, and relay with football. It's a so immediate um it's not a concern as far as noise for me it's more about we can gain some usable park space in this area by removing some of that vegetation and kind of opening up to the south because what happens there is the invasives are like have, like crawling up around the yeah. good old trees mm -hmm. and there's some areas where it's a deeper kind of slow down area to the to the property line in some areas where it's a little bit flatter. So essentially we could probably get a little bit more useful space um, out of that area because it's kind of in between these two berms. Um, I think that the bigger challenge, at least with a proposed uh, 
you know, roadway is that berm is fairly narrow. Um, and there's a fence up and then it, it kind of goes down. So there's probably some reworking of that berm to make it into a, a, a gravel, probably what I would assume is it would be proposed as a gravel road uh, for construction purposes and maintenance purposes. Um, in our master plan, that area would include a paved path um, that would go along the park. But as we kind of proposed in this capital budget, it's, it's a lower priority of a walking path around the back end of the park as it is kind of accessing the facility. So uh, I think either option of those, it, we do use that for um, that berm now is is how we get water to the football field for irrigation. We have kind of a, a hose that runs along that kind of line and, and on that berm. And there, you know, when it's maintained, it is an accessible way of like getting to the football field faster from, from that area. So probably some consideration on how that uh, access path would look and then how it gets off of the berm down to the sign, I think is probably the bigger challenge maybe. So I, I, I think from at least my recommendation, I'd probably recommend the option two with the matting based on the timing um, as it goes from here to plan commission to city council, probably the earliest we're looking at is like in November, December, uh, you know, timeline, I think at this point. And, and at that point, we have a much better um, success rate of it not being wet in that area. This, and this has to do with the, um, the money. So that annual fee is, does that go to parks in that or does that no. is to the city? General. So the parks budget, uh, about $450,000 is all funded through the general fund. So in essence, you could say any revenue that goes into the general fund is helping offset the expenditures of the general fund, which is the parks budget. The rec budget is in a, a, a different fund, the rec and pool and community center. Um, you know, I, I have thoughts and opinions about, you know, the use of the money, certainly the citywide, we have, you know, funding issues and whether we have a little bit of decisions to make whether the referendum passes or not uh, moving forward. And there are positions that are not being included in the referendum um, that certainly from my department needing additional help, you know, would be, you know, but I don't know if it's more than what police department needs or what the fire department needs. And that's really not up for, I think, this committee to maybe put that restriction or that recommendation on for the use of those funds. Um, ideally, some some form of you know funding is available in the next couple of years to look at our staffing shortages in the department. But <laughs> Patrick, can we get two for one hundred sixty thousand? <laughs> I mean, I'm up to it. <laughs> Just saying. So actually, that kind of I did that. It's, maybe it's kind of a wonky question, but how how are you able to put up a new sign on the Belmont? You have to get a DRT permit, correct? Correct. So we have reached out to, we have like a contact that handles the area for the DOT. Um, and we have reached out to them a question on if this site would be permitted. And they've told us we had, uh, or we would be, uh, for kind of a couple reasons. One is, while this is a park, um, it, it's zoned, uh, I've written down, um, community design district, which is kind of a, a broad district that allows right. for commercial and so So that's one of the main things that DOT looks for is, is the property zone for commercial activity. Um, and then also we wanted to double check with them with the properties relation to kind of the off and on ramp on the belt line there, if that would be an issue. And they said, um, because of Monona standing as, a, as an incorporated city that, uh, you know, there is enough distance there. So we've been told we would um, receive a DOT permit, and I believe this would be kind of similar to um, when we built the Sun Prairie location, where it was kind of a similar scenario, where that was kind of a, like a planned development district, kind of a broader district, where we received kind of the permit from the city and then the DOT permit. Okay. Okay. 
Um, do you guys only do flat fee arrangements? Or do you also engage in agreements for landowners for the percentages for the sales per sign? Do you have different options for those? So we do have, um, yes, we do have some percentage agreements. And that is something we talked about with this, the, the city is, you know, if, if that was an option. But one thing, um, the feedback we heard was that cities don't like unpredictable revenue streams, I guess, or, you know, in, you know, like COVID, you know, obviously our revenues was not great, and that definitely hurt uh, those percentage agreements. Um, so typically we we go with the flat ones, but we have also percentage agreements. Okay. I'm, you know, the opinion that, that the 6666, which is a monthly rate that comes out to the ADN, is seemingly to be a little bit on the low side of things. So I don't know if this is an arbitrary number that's just one out there. Um, I would feel more comfortable, like just kind of in legit revenue generating, um, just doing kind of like what kind of money is available to come in and it was in the city that's interested in any sort of revenue sharing mm -hmm. agreement. Mm -hmm. um, considering it's probably one of the first signs as you come in to the belt line off the interstate. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that may factor in how you market that sign. Um, so to me, that would be beneficial to kind of see how that is, you know, 80 grand, which is just north of 6,600 bucks a month for a huge sign to be put up with a lot of infrastructure work, mm -hmm. removal of landscaping, possible sound, Issues and then um, just a different feel of the park. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm just wondering what the, what that monetary reward should be for the quality of changes. Mm -hmm. you know? So I would imagine once this goes to council, that they would ask these types of questions too, in terms of like what kind of money is possibly available. Um, because uh, just with inflation as we've seen, you know, it's just not the same as it was two, three, five, seven years ago. Mm -hmm. So that would be something that I, I would take interest in more thinking of uh, the revenue. Um, Definitely, yeah, I can uh, get more information on that. And um, one thing I would add is that um, it does take us some years in order to come out ahead on these projects. Like obviously, you know, mentioned inflation, these are large capital expenses that we have to make to get the digital signs and the concrete and all that, those type of things. But definitely can get you uh, numbers up there. So there wouldn't, like you're saying, there wouldn't be revenue generating back to us until the sign is paid for itself. No, we would, I mean, okay. we would be obviously paying these payments the second the sign is in the ground. Um, it's just on our end, it, it can take a few years oh, before. Right. 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 So, right here. Um, I'm looking at information that says that uh, uh, some of these signs can generate on average in high traffic areas, like 250000 a month. Does that sound about right? A month? That feels... Or is that more like annual? That would probably feel closer to annual is my guess, but I can, you know, I don't work on the city side, but I yeah, I'm curious to that. see what the, the Sun Prairie sign, the one on uh, 50 yeah, line, right before Sun Prairie, there. I'd be mm -hmm. curious to see what that gross is because that seems to me that that would be pretty similar, although the bell on track is probably better. Yeah, definitely. Can you would you be able to get that to, to uh, yes, yeah, yeah, but, but yeah, whatever the best way to circulate right. like that would be, I can definitely get that to uh, yeah. But at the end of the 10 year lease, if we decided we did not want to sign there anymore, um, what happens and who's responsible? Um, well, typically in our agreements, we own the materials and stuff like that. So we take them down, we would, you know, take everything back. Um, you know, obviously, we would hope to see it go longer than 10 years, but if uh, you know, we're being terminated, then um, you know, we would kind of see what that looks like. It is this we do. Most of our agreements are in the 20 year range because, like I mentioned, it can take some years to kind of earn back the, the expense. Um, but if you know if it were to go down, then we would, you know, we would do the takedown ourselves. How often do you do um, promotions for the local not? It's, it's a yeah, so the nonprofits, it's a, a year, I can get you information on this too. So we, it's a program we run called uh, Adams Collaborate, um, which every year, the uh, application process actually starts up in a month, so I can send you guys if you're, when some local nonprofits are interested in. Um, but then we choose about eight of them a year, and then each of them receives like a year-long ad campaign, which we value at roughly like $200,000. Um, so they're up, they work with our design team, kind of create a whole campaign, and then they, you know, are seen throughout the throughout the county uh, over the course of the year. Does this sign ever shut off? That's something uh, we'd be happy to talk about and what, you know, 
what you guys would typically bring up. Obviously, in some municipalities, they stay on all day, and some municipalities, they turn off at midnight. It kind of um, depends what the, what the city would like there. And then I'd also add on brightness, that's also kind of usually written into these things uh, with the city as well. I would imagine if you had to turn on the sign, that's lost opportunity to even generate advertisements. Yes, um, but obviously, you know, as long as the sign is on during rush hour or major times, we're not as concerned about two, three. Do these digital signs cause any like pollution or problems for sort of animals or even traffic patterns that conventional signs do? That is a good question. I definitely have studies I can get you all on, um, uh, like distraction, um, you know, static sign versus digital sign. Um, some stuff done by like the Federal Highway Administration. Um, as far as light pollution, the signs, I can get you some more information on that too, but the signs do kind of naturally dim as, you know, as the night falls. Um, and we are restricted on kind of state requirements as far as how uh, bright they can be. I believe it's like three foot angles, I believe is the measurement. They're definitely the OT requirement. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I mean, in any case, it is going to produce light. Mm -hmm. right. It's a giant billboard that's lit up. So it will. For any of you that have taken the pilgrimage up to uh, Pros and Tundra, you know, my first time, one of my big takeaways was the amount of signs and how much that changed the landscape. And I see like the belt line is, you know, not far Yeah. You know, got top golf coming right down right after that, you know, so that whole corridor will have a depth to it. So, the city of Madison does not allow signs in their property. So, the only ones you see are in the town of Madison. Um, or outside. Well, there's no more town that's about. Well, yeah. correct. Yeah. They, they got but they're grandfathered in. Yeah. Right. The city yes, of Monona yeah. also does not currently allow these type of electronic billboards. So it would require a variance from the plan commission or some uh, reworking of the existing ordinance. And so typically that is why we're here for start. And then it moves to plan commission. And then theoretically, you Planning Commission would deny the application based on the existing ordinance. They can appeal to the city council and the city council can make that decision. But that, I, I think, you know, we have one section of probably frontage along the who's still part of city property where it, it just it makes sense. Although I would say maybe along Stoke Road uh, in front of our, you know, properties bordering Three Meadows Park, potentially would be another option along the term of Stoke Road that's redone. But, those are really the only two front facing, you know, city properties that we potentially have access to to allow uh, this type of application. So, um, oh. yeah. Oh, Matt, oh. sorry. <laughs> uh, um, this is a little bit more minor. I, but I first I did want to echo because I was going to bring up earlier the the sound disrupt of sound barrier disruption is was a concern of mine. I know we discussed that. And also the city having some control over content, I was also worried about sort of political campaigning up there and, you know, pissing some city residents off if we put something up there that not everybody agrees with. Um, but the more minor th concern, the access road, do we have any concerns about that creating like a, a safety issue, like kids hanging out in the park and using that road to get maybe closer to the belt line it looks like there's a fence separating the park from the belt line but does that i don't know does that pose any safety back, concern back. that kids will mess around on that road and go us. places that they shouldn't be going <laughs> oh and i was probably she can't hear us but you can hear her did you can you hear us yeah can okay, you hear me I, yeah. now i got you on the tv volume so back up like 20 seconds oh, okay <laughs> I reiterated some concerns that were brought up earlier about the sound barrier and the city having control over the content of the billboard. But a more minor concern or question is whether we have concerns about the access road maybe creating a safety issue because it is sort of attractive to maybe people hanging out in the park um, and using that road to get maybe closer to the belt line. Or I don't even know if like the the um, tower of the um, billboard is like climbable or, you know, do I, I just, it looks like we have, there's a fence that divides the park from the belt line, but 
I'm just wondering if that act that access road would like attract people closer to the belt line. What we would probably look at is um, updating the fencing that goes around the football field to include access to that um, road potentially. Um, what we do now with UF Cellular is we have a double gate where okay. we can only get our vehicles or US Cellular vehicles into the, the football field with that double gate. And then to the right of that, where this access firm would be, uh, is, you know, publicly available, but we could potentially look at having at least a, a gate there. So vehicular access won't be available, but you could potentially walk, you know, you could walk around a different area. Um, but I think there are some opportunities to reduce that issue or concern. Okay. Yeah, I just didn't want it to be like a liability to the city um, mm -hmm. in that situation. Well, it sounds like, um, I think the, the, the overall tenor I'm getting is people kind of are okay with the idea, but there's so Mm -hmm. a fair number of questions. I'm wondering if we should bring it back again. September. Yeah, I'm just I'm trying to recall what our conversation with Doug was on plan commission timing and scheduling and what that might look like. And they're the second and fourth Mondays. Um probably a fourth Monday because I think they they're still gonna there's still a detailed application they're gonna need to put together for planning and zoning. So uh, so I would guess it would be the earliest would be the second Monday in September at this point. Their their second meeting in September. Yeah. So that that would be after our September 11th meeting. Uh, I mean, or maybe I'm wrong. Maybe everybody's ready to vote vote on no. today. Yeah. The, the numbers and things like that too. So. And you were uh, you were taking notes, right? Yes, it is. I have a few things of note to bring back as far as revenue numbers and information on uh, you know local postings or municipal postings. Um, are there other things? I don't know if I did just minutes or other things I should bring back from the time. Well, certainly one of the the issues would be the sound mm -hmm. you know, illumination of some. Large trees is going to affect the, the park. I think uh, the Aaron, you have a good point also just about the kind of the late pollution, uh, you know, migrating birds, things of that sort. Uh, it takes like, that to have this sign out. Uh, right now, people in that location see trees and see a park. Right? And I can't say that I'm a fan of seeing billboards. Mm -hmm. you know, but, uh, I think we need some more info. Yeah, certainly, and, and you know, certainly appreciate the inquiry regarding the financial aspects of this. That is certainly something that council ended up negotiating specifically. But we certainly really need this body is specific physical impacts and coordination on the park series. Really, that not that the other input isn't, isn't welcome, but the, from you guys, we really, we really want to hear concerns about, like I so said, the access, the security question. That was a great question. You know those those types of things in terms of how impact to the park because that's that's you guys are our experts on that so certainly we're gonna we'll bring that a little bit of information back but right. just selfishly as a staff member just know that's kind of really the feedback that we really want to hear from you guys is, is on those physical aspects and and like I said the security the planting how the way to get the sound it all those are that's really what we need, we need to hear from you guys on. right so I think yes yeah. Some of that in particular, the sound sounds like absolutely will be important for us to have. Um, so, anybody have anything else you want to? I think um, the positive side of it is of all the parkland we have in Nona, this is a little sliver that right. really no one maybe you know we took a walk through it at that meeting and it's right. not sticky right. back there. It's you know like so. Yeah, without a pathway, I don't think it's okay. There are people that think could be walked back there, but not very many, it's not very, very bright. <laughs> so, at least now. Okay, then uh, we'll see you uh, in a month. Back to you. Yeah, that sounds good.
Yes, I really appreciate your time. Um, and I'll make sure to yeah, follow up with uh, the requested information. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks so much. Thank you. Appreciate it. Have a good day. Thanks. So I think I might have dropped the ball and that's all you had in your packet. Does that sound right? Yep. Okay. <laughs> I just emailed back. I'll bring it up on the screen. Hold on. I gotta... thought it was gonna be so simple we didn't even need to do it. Uh, well, it kinda it kinda is, but um if you check your email it should be in I'll just bring it up a little bit into difficulties because it wasn't in the packet that I noticed but no still discuss it whatever it is it was noticed well the meeting is noticed yeah but right. the information the agenda items were noticed. Oh, that's okay, right. Yeah. Just yeah. The, yeah, the the notice just has to apprise the public of what might okay. be discussed. Okay. And it's just a, a piece cycle like extension, right? Yeah. Okay. Can you see that, Rachel? Why is this other thing still on? I don't know why the. Can you see the packet? Yeah, I can. And okay. I have it on my screen. I have it at home on my screen. Okay. So um B cycle, if you recall, was approved in 2021 for the placement of stations at Schluter Park and Grand Crossing. Um, that was a three-year contract, started in June of 2021. So we're at the end of our contract, original contract with the city paid for the um, installation of those and then pays an annual maintenance fee um, to have those stations here in our community. Um, and so that was $7,000. Uh, those are covered by sponsors that are on the wayfinding sign at each station. So at um, Schluter, it's WPS, and MGE. At the Grand Crossing is current, uh, the current apartments, Avid, Forge, and Buck and Hunts. And so those um, sponsors cover the maintenance cost. Um, the proposal from B-Cycle is to start to go to $12,000 annually. Not really shocking given how everything else has increased in cost and including the staff time that it takes to go out and service these B-Cycle. And, and what is it now? Seven. Seven, yeah. So seven to 12. Um, I think it's been a great addition to have in our city and have at the park system. Uh, we've been working with our uh, existing sponsors on the increased costs that it would cost to have to them. Uh, I hope to have uh, a written commitment from all of those existing ones. We also have new ones in um, that are interested given our events. Memorial Day Parade could use tourism funds um, as a form of marketing to sponsor one of the stations that they would like. Um, so we have that opportunity as well. Um, included in this version of your packet or your email is, so this was the original one, uh, 12 docks at Grand Crossing, 10 docks at Schluter. Um, and that's where the, the contract details came out. Now we're just kind of $6,000 a year at both locations. Uh, for a five-year uh, contract total. Uh, that would get us to 2030. Their annual report is included, uh, membership breakouts. Uh, and Helen Bradley, who was the general manager that presented last time, is unfortunately not being able to be here today, um, but she did send this information. Um, you can read through that in your packet. The one interesting I thought about it was that when we scroll down to kind of the station maps, 27 new stations in 2023, um, 48 new stations since 2020. So there's 
really been expanding and, and especially in the Fitchburg area, um, you know, we're still pretty light on the side of the lake. It's, it's just the two that we have. There is uh, at least a planned one to go in at the new um, development on Broadway um, across from Menards. There's going to be a station there. And I think there's been some talks of having one at um, the other new development at Broadway and Bridge. Uh, so when we go to our results, this is the one that I was most interested in, is that Grand Crossing actually outperformed Schluter as far as the number of takeouts. And I don't know what to make of that other than probably the people that, you know, apartment owners that live there or people staying at the hotel. Um, going to the restaurant. Restaurant, stopping in and, and going out. So an average of 5.6 at Schluter and 7.75 at Grand Crossing Park. Um, and then they just have some other data on it. So I have a question. Yeah. It's not possible for B Central to approach the Tourism Council for funds. We have to find sponsors. It, yes. Yes. Okay. I feel like it's, everyone I see on those bikes are the people visiting town. <laughs> yeah. I mean it is it is a it is a like this form of like um commuting potentially and accessing this community is build we are part of building the infrastructure. Just like building roads and getting roads to you know different communities. This is now part of how we improve the infrastructure of you know bike and e-bike accessibility through our city. Um, I think it gives us an opportunity if our existing sponsors are not interested in increased fees to market. We have a very much need for some package sponsorship marketing deals for you know upcoming years. Uh, and so I think this is an attractive option because we get like action and participation option for there's quite a bit of visibility versus like a static sign at all the pool that gets the pool patron seat, your bike gets distributed throughout the you know number of stations that they have. Uh, so at least from my perspective, it's not a worry about um, the department being on the hook for additional funding to you know pay for the maintenance cycle. Do we know how Fitchburg what you know what they're well they, they are on a similar program in that a lot of their some of those are in public spaces some are on private property um they were able to get grant funding right. for the installation of the the dot you know the right. the that That's cycle transportation right But I'm not sure about the the maintenance right. remodels. Like I don't, I can ask that question. Those usually are just capital projects, right? The, yeah. Once once the Fed might pay, you know, help pay for the and then, like you said, your capital point. investment, right. but not the uh, operating. Yeah, Jake. As long as we feel confident that we can raise that money to cover that sentence of forty two percent increase. Yeah. <laughs> Yes. Well, is it though? I mean, look at what we pay for everything. Uh, we're going to be increased. We've increased fees by 42%, I guarantee you, over the last five years for our, our programs, and we will continue to increase those fees. You know, it's just yeah. the cost of doing business is has gone up. And um, at least my professional opinion as being in the city is that it's a, a net positive having B cycle in the city. Oh, yeah. Uh, Right. Yeah, and that's that's my point that I was going to get at. If we feel confident that we can yeah. easily raise this money through sponsorships, you know, then it's really not a point to really get worried about. If there's a market. So I have to bring this up. One thing that, that always bothers me when I'm out biking is the vast majority of people on B cycle bikes don't wear helmets because they don't have. Like, unless they brought one with them, like, where are you going to get one? And the more, you know, as you showed, they're more and more successful. These are all over the place. Like, if you had numbers of miles written, it's like you could, you could probably predict based on those 
knowing how many miles, how many accidents there are going to be. And, you know, as somebody who rides a bike a lot, it's not fairly obvious that if you fall off a bike with a helmet, you're probably going to be okay. And a very simple bike accident with no helmet, you know, on your way to the hospital. So, I don't know. That's I'm not necessarily expecting you to have an answer to that. I mean, if you do, <laughs> so it's, a, it's a question. A, a criteria for approval is that B cycle supplies has a supply of bike helmets. I just that like that. I, mean, I do wish you, I really wish you'd been here today because I would have liked to yeah. have that discussion with her. I mean, it's got to be something the, in your industry to worry about. I mean, the problem that I would well, say is probably there only because I think a good portion of people don't want to wear a helmet that somebody else is wearing. Right. So I agree. even if they yeah. did provide them, they probably wouldn't be used very often, I would guess. That's, yeah. And yeah. I, I thought of that too, because I, yeah, you wouldn't want to wear, wear my hair. Like yeah. so. <laughs> would, would Helen have information about how many accidents have occurred? I can ask. I, I'm over. Uh, I can ask. It's, yeah, it, I, I raise it more as I've raised it before and kind of wanted, you know, I would like to continue that discussion with, you know, I, I got to believe that they're, that they, you know, they're aware of that issue. Mm -hmm. It's pretty obvious. To me, so. And maybe just advertisement about wearing helmets, <laughs> sticker on a bike for signage at the station. But yeah, you're right. It's not like the kayak rentals where, you know, uh, you no problem wearing a life vest or using a hat that somebody else uses. But, yeah. So the thing that caught my eye, too, I saw that we were actually down 104 less steps. Mm -hmm. But I would assume that's because there's so many more stations coming in the town that people have other places to go to get them. We were down. I thought we were up. Uh, at Schluter. So. Grand Crossing increased the number yeah. of checkouts in 2023. From 2022, but, Schluter Park decreased. But if you scroll down, are you talking just like total? Four. No, it is. That's mine. Down a little more. Right there. 100. Oh, yeah. oh 104 less trips. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Could be, could be, you know, when the season, when did the 2022 season start? Did we get an earlier, you know, starting day? What, you know, like it's, it's like pool numbers. It all depends on what the weather is and how they, they go, you know. What, what is the definition of a trip? Is it like a one way to a different station or is it just taking a bike out and returning it to the same station? I think each time a bike is checked out from a station, okay. whether it's you were on coming to Schluter, okay. so there's like a, you know, you have to like stop and check out a different bike at a different station. But I think within an hour, that you have to like recheck your bike in at a different station so you can keep continuing on. Yeah, it is on it is on the app. Okay. Just say it's common, you know, I'm a big advocate and believer in e bike is a great form of transportation, great for the environment in Madison, then all of in bike cities, Pittsburgh. Um e cycles very reputable. With their response teams, I've heard lots of people give feedback on processing of payments and resolution of complaints, you know, low batteries, things like that. But for the most part, uh, I was always really encouraged to try it myself. And once I did, you realize how convenient it is and what a different perspective you get when you're riding uh, on the bike pass on an e-bike. So mm -hmm. given that we're on the capital loop and bringing people through that and giving them the option to explore our city via e-bike. It just seems like a great opportunity. Yeah. Um, and yeah, just those comments alone, I think, you know, not that I want as many as Fitch for maybe, but you know, yeah. uh, maybe another 
stage yeah. two in our proximity would help encourage people to take this form of transportation. I mean, we're going to be looking at, we will be proposing that in a future capital budget, one on campus, whether that's at the pool, whether that's at, you know, depending on specific uh, campus, you know, construction with the uh, Metro bus coming in right down our you know, street, basically, uh, I would assume we would have one here for sure, uh, at least propose, um, you know, certainly if the one on at uh, Broadway, you know, fares okay, I'm kind of you know, questioning how you get on that location and where to go. Um, I know you still need move. Yeah. Yep. I mean, there is, there's a small station at, uh, uh, across the street from San Damiano, uh, on the other side, there's four yeah. bikes there, yeah. but I just kind of see one in the future at San Damiano as well. Um, you know, that we keep them in, keep them in the areas where we would want people to stay, you know, certainly I think Schluter and the two locations we have are very desirable for, uh, people to stay and hang out. Um, and that's why I think we're seeing overall success with these stations. Yep. All right. So you're looking for a recommendation from us on the, the contract fee. Correct. All right. Somebody want to make a motion? I'll, or Gertrude. I'll, I'll, I'll move. <laughs> Is there a second? Second. Oh, she had to leave. Rachel had to leave. Oh, okay. Sorry, she had to leave before. Uh, so that was Patrick. All right, further discussion. Oh, uh, there's a say aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion carries. All right. And I know operating budget is on there, but we don't have it, right? No, it'll this. Today is just so kind of a discussion that. of the boom and doom, and then uh, we will have them prepared uh, for September 11th. So I just wanted for you to see what we're kind of dealing with from a staff level. Uh, we have three different scenarios that we'll be preparing for that you'll hear about. A lot of things um, in play right now. And so uh, there's a referendum budget uh, that includes uh, implementing the compensation plan, which you may or may not have seen available on the city website. Uh, we contracted through an agency and confirmed what we've been saying all along is that our staff is underpaid uh, significantly in certain areas compared to um, communities with similar uh, patterns and sizes. Uh, we have lost staff and continue to lose staff based on wages and compensation. Uh, health insurance continues to go up, uh, and the, the way that the city budgets are done is that the um, the amount that we can increase taxes uh, is not keeping up with our expenditures. For our budget, parks, recreation, outdoor pool, and community center, uh, we bring in uh, over 50% of revenue to our expenditures, which puts us, as you heard before, maybe not in the top 10% in the nation for park and rec departments. So our revenue recovery is quite high. Uh, that could be looked at good or bad because we do, uh, our prices are not, um, they're not cheap. What we have to charge for service is because of the instructions that I've been given to uh, balance the budget. Uh, and so there, there is challenges with that um, in, in, in how we can continue to offer affordable programs. We have lots of competition outside of our borders. Uh, we have been incredibly um, supported by this community and the families that are here and participating in our recreation programs and the outdoor pool uh, and using our parks and the updates that we've made. So the way that we're looking at this is that we want to not see um, any reductions in service and what we offer. Uh, we're not gonna be proposing those, but we are also, um, I will endlessly advocate for the compensation for our team and our staff. Uh, I think it's incredibly important, the work that we do in this community, 
And I think we've been doing it for a long time. There's a lot of people that are being grossly underpaid for what they do. And in order to keep doing what we do and providing the services that we do to the community, we have to make sure we have a stable workforce to do that. And if that means that we have to look at areas that need to be decreased uh, or reduc reductions, we will look at that. Um, we went, we've gone through this process quite a bit as staff on priorities, and, and I get this from all of you, different times and different areas of what your priority is. Um, the priority of this department has always been, you know, we kind of have a tiered approach. So like, why don't we have this done? Or why isn't this done? Well, because we have to prioritize things and we only have a certain amount of staff to do things. And so, um, you know, our biggest priority is to keep our facilities clean and available to the public. So that includes our, our restroom facilities, our parks that they're mowed and that they're maintained. Or, um, and then it goes right into our revenue producing activities. So our after school program, our park shelter rentals, our outdoor pool that bring in our revenue pools are, are right there in a priority list. Um, and then it's supporting city events that we have. So the events that we have in city, uh, and we have a lot. So if you have been here for a while, which I think a lot of us have been here for a while, maybe not, um, it's easy to kind of like realize that, well, this is the standard across the other communities of what we get to enjoy here. It's just not very lucky to have what we have in our department. I think it's a big part in, in what we do. So the budget for myself is a challenging uh, exercise because we have to start looking at um, where our revenue generators are and it's in our child care programs, so all those full time programs. So that accounts for 70% of our revenues in the recreation budget. Um, the outdoor pool, which is uh, continues, we want to talk about cost to operate and the increases continues to cost a lot more to operate given the age of the facility, but you look out there today, we came in full sport. You look out there, you know, on a hot day, you watch a Monona swim and dive and how much this facility brings people together. The Aqua Zumba, you know, come on at lunchtime and we got 125, you know, seniors and actually all ages, you know, yeah, dancing. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and so it, I think there's, there's things that we can do from a budget perspective, um, to try to reduce, but quite frankly, we're at a point where um, we really hope to see that this referendum is, is, is passed and we can continue to offer service. If the council elects to implement the compensation plan regardless of um, the outcome of the referendum, if the referendum would fail, then they're gonna ask us looking at cuts to service in order to do that. And we would be affected uh, by that significantly. So let me let me just jump in and give a couple minutes big picture because I think we can assume everybody know, knows all the stuff that we know. Yeah, I, I don't. Right, could be. Uh, so right now the council we're looking at proposing a three million dollar uh, levy increase above what it, what we currently. What the current levy is. It's a very valuable, very significant increase. We did do a community wide survey, and sure a lot of you took part in that. Um, that we had three options three million, which is essentially cost to continue. Um, 3.4, I think, was adding what, five or six employees, you know, plus that base, and then another one that added even more employees. The only one that got an uh, overall favorable was the three million dollar uh, levy increase for cost to continue, and that was fifty nine percent actually supported it, thirty two percent didn't, which I think was um, we we're all really happy about because you know could have come back if we didn't support it. any of the three. Um, <clears throat> some of the I think. Couple of reasons why why we desperately need this the new revenue the things that have happened that were really beyond our control. Well, one is actually the increasing 
a massive increase in property values in the city makes it harder because of the way they decide. The way they decide how much you can raise the levy is based on your new construction value compared to your total value. Well, our total value keeps jumping by leaps and bounds. So the project, the size of a project, new construction that you need to get 1% keeps getting bigger and bigger. Like just last year, it was 1.7 billion. So this year it's 2.1 billion. Right. Yeah. So that's that, that's one thing that's been piling up over time, but certainly accelerated the last few years at the same time that we had you know, a year of like eight and a half percent inflation followed by whatever it was, five and a half, and now it's like three-ish. Um, where at the same time, we could raise the levy basically to zero. Like actually, you know, when we get the numbers back from, from our co-talk to the finance guy, you'd say, well, yeah, you got $15,000 that you can raise the levy this year. Um, yeah, uh, to, to explain, what, yeah. To, just to further expound upon that, like, you know, we had 0% budget increases for the previous three years and a 1% increase last year, right? And then that makes it very difficult when we have police and firefighters, which are the, the largest portion of our of our employees negotiating for 3% increases in contracts. That money is going somewhere, and if we don't have an increase, well, we can't pay it, and we go to arbitration and have to figure out how to pay it, and then we start cutting other programs from parks or public works or anywhere else in order to try and accommodate that through arbitration. So, right. And I, I, I think it's, as Jake referenced, we did a compensation study and found not to anybody's surprise that the employees are well below, many of them are well below the mean where they should be, um, which is reflect and that is reflected in the fact that we had, I think, 21 or 22 percent turnover last year. Which and I asked Leah Kimmel, our HR person, if, you know, in the past it had been, you know, three or four or five percent, even five is high. So I think that inflation really hammered us because we had people leaving here to go take similar positions, like in nearby like Cottage Grove or uh, some curry and getting you know three dollars an hour more to do the same work. So that's yeah, we're at a point where either either we're gonna have to sell for you know not as good, not as high quality employees or can be willing to take the same job for a lot less money. Or we gotta figure out a way <clears throat> to take the bill. And that goes without saying that those communities have an advantage over us in the sense that they can build upon because they have green right. rights, they can expand, yeah. there's new subdivisions, there's new buildings right. on the periphery, we can't do that. Right, right. We're kind of, being landlocked is really a disadvantage in this case. So, and it is, I mean, it's, it's not really a very rational system that they set up for how you figure out how much you can raise the levy, but that's the design to punish, punish, punish city is what it is. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, so that's kind of the background. And so, I think Jake was given instructions to if it passes and then either one or two right. scenarios for, you know, if it doesn't pass, what do we do? There would be potential to, you know, we could implement a wheel tax, we could implement a garbage collection fee, and that would get us maybe 25% of what we do. So. And that's only. That, that's just taking other things down the road, you know. So, yeah. we, so once it's done, it's done. It's not like we're going to get new revenue. So, there we go. Well, and the challenge is we have a Tuesday, November election, you know, referendum question. And then we'll have to probably have a special meeting that week because you have to have your budget approved by your governing body and submitted, you know, to start J1. So, It'll be a very quick turnaround. Um, and so this council will have some challenges and discussions, you know, I think uh, upcoming of what ifs, you know, happens. And so a couple of different scenarios have to be played out, um, which I would assume some of that will affect us. Uh, as far as what we're concerned with is to 
maintain our existing services that we have and continue to offer high level of um, uh, access for our community, you know, through our facilities and through our programs. So uh, some of those will you know, just naturally have increases that I'll propose and so we'll have a fee schedule. Um, but there, there is a threshold, I think, of what we can charge at certain facilities um, that at certain programs. And, um, you know, I think we have to hope that the community values the services that we provide as much as the people in the community um, as, as a whole, because I do think we get great service um, in this community. And for what we do, and, you know, we're at over 130 employees right now today. It's a, it's a very large department, but it's done on the backs of that person sitting down there, uh, the person that's sitting in the office, uh, and myself. And so uh, we have you know, basically four administrators for 130 people. Uh, it, it's, it's a lot. Uh, we have two full-time parks employees. Uh, Cottage Grove just got their second full-time parks employee approved in the budget. They have no uh, pool. They have no ice skating rink. They have no community center. Um, they have less parks, less acreage. And uh, they're getting to And they're paying more than both my employees are making starting so uh, it is a challenge and each time we have a full-time staff replacement in our department it specifically falls a lot on this and i i train we have three right now that are in their first year Two and it's past now hey rose is almost on her year almost on her yeah which is great it's it but it is there's a there's a there's a learning curve on you know how we do things and and that just takes time away from us to be able to do other items like minutes for the program for mm -hmm. the community. So we will have that is looking to be a packed agenda item for um, our next meeting on September 11th. Uh, I also just well we can get an answer at this report, but. Um, I would like to have it as a special meeting, but I don't think that's going to make it because I'm going on vacation at the end of August and then we start with school and have a bunch of programs back to back. So it's got to be super lucky. Okay. Anyone have anything they would like to know or have Jay provide before we talk about the budget next time? If not right now, we can. Something occurs to you, shoot him an email. Yeah, I just wanted to add one more thing about the budget, just because not everybody knows, and it is a difficult thing to try and express to people about how it works. Like this year, we we received a grand total of twenty four thousand dollars more for the uh, budget than we had last year, even though we built our net new construction is eight million dollars. But what Doug was explaining before, that eight million dollars is going into two billion dollars, so that percentage is like 0.4 percent so that ends up giving us a grand total of twenty four thousand dollars additional money this year even though that new project is going to like on the books you look at it and and the average citizen looks at it and it says well you build an eight million dollar property and the taxes on that are now you know the old taxes were eight thousand dollars the new taxes are sixty but the city doesn't get like that is just they're just paying a larger portion of what the, the overall levy is so it's not like new money. So even though we build like uh, the bloom and we're gonna see $600,000 of property tax in seven years from now, um, that's going to be the value of that building, uh, hopefully $16 million is gonna be averaged into 2.5 billion probably by then. And it's gonna give us a relatively small increase. So it's not like, it's not apples to apples. So. All right. Not a, you know, you know, Patrick, you made a joke of this about the two signs. Yeah, I yeah, know. That's I mean, listening to how you know the levy with the laws are set up and, and how it's being described as being a punishment the cities, this is like an untenable situation that I'm surprised there's this lawsuit happening here. You know, to see how, how can a city that is landlocked, that is developing, that is going vertical, how does that map with how you can actually add physical capital land to it? Like, that to me is a discrepancy that's untenable. It is. So to look at these things as like that signage on the built line, Kelly's point that it's strip of land, it's not very used. The thought of going to Adams and like if you get two billboards up, yeah, 
just as I could. And that's why I joke about it, right? Because normally, if this wasn't an issue, I would probably be on the side of, we probably don't need both, right? Because we don't want to really see it. But because of this, it's making me change my. Well, we're, yeah. we're an urban environment yeah. at this point, right? You know, yep. we're getting surrounded by development. Mm -hmm. And we got, we have a big uh, city that we have to, you know, fund and support exactly. and services for. For a stretch of land that is already up with a concrete highway, and, you know, in the area, mm -hmm. it's, it's a thought to, to possibly consider, you know, if you find the, the back one, mm -hmm. we'll, we'll bring up some of the I mean, $60,000 in our budget, an extra sixty, an extra eighty thousand dollars in our budget is a lot yeah. compared to what all for her. You know, I mean, yeah. I mean, it's 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 a position, mm -hmm. for right? Not having to lose a position. Yep. Or not. Yep. It'd be great to see us pitch to maybe to ninety or hundred. Love to see these numbers and then double it to two. Mm -hmm. uh, it started at thirty. Yes. So. Oh, now you tell us. Yes. Yeah. 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 Sorry. I'm trying to hardball here. Yeah. You've been yeah. hardballing this whole time. Well, yeah, uh, city attorney has been hard ball. Yeah, yes. yeah, uh, yeah. When yeah. we did 2010, it was 20. Wow. And then there was it was 20 a year with a one and a half percent escalator. So that would have just ended this year. We would have gotten that through in 20. So yeah, the the number that was thrown out was pretty high. Mm -hmm. We can't really, you know, that because it, we knew that the board and sure. you know, it would be a, a tough sled, and so like, you know, don't kind of come to us and like. And, and with and our, not, right. our location that we're talking about for the sign, it becomes, I think, prime real estate. But after all, there's going to be a lot of advertisement that they're wanting to do that. So it may be some more hard wall to, to really get the price there's, there's, up there's, even higher. There's two edges to that sword. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's two sides but, to that. And then sword. something else to bring up, and I need to go into this broad, broad tax related thing, but right. like, you know, there's some people like in our survey, a lot of people are like, sell send them, you know, you could balance the buck. Well, we could do that, technically. I mean, we could probably do something like that, but it won't, wouldn't balance the budget because whatever we gain from that would go in the general fund and the city would probably back to pay back. Well, after, after, after whatever was extra would go in the general fund after paying yeah. back the loan and paying back the county and everything else. But the big issue is that that wouldn't go to like create new positions or fund the operating budget because we'd probably use that for borrowing that would have to do it instead of paying in high, instead of paying interest rates on, yeah. on, on continuing to borrow for large projects. We would use that until it was gone for what we things that we would normally borrow for. Right. Right. So that it would be gone. Okay. Uh, so we'll do budget and signs again next one. Uh, director's report. We had a, you know, let's see. That was a wonderful, wonderful day. It was a wonderful day here today. We did just pass our health inspection, which um, happens technically as the health department in the county says once a year. By code, we have to get our sanitary once a year and three water testing qualities. We have not been tested since 2021. So it's been a while for us. Um, and they also chalked that up to being short on staff and not having enough people to do develop pools. We though, after doing some research, have been one of the few pools that have gone so far without getting audited. So I don't really know if that's a kudos to us because we're doing a really good job and they're not worried or if we like really just fell that low on the, the paper stack. But we did pass, which is fantastic. Um, and as an aging facility happens, a lot of mechanical parts break. Jake and I have been limping through to get us passed today to pass, literally limping through. Had a lot of mechanical failures and issues that we've been dealing with over the last few, uh, few weeks. So hoping that we can just get up there to the end. But we did pass. That's all I'm going to get. 25th is the end of month. Yeah. And then the month of 25th, Sunday. Which is longer than at least 70% of the like, work. Goodman yeah. Pool just announced that they're closed indefinitely. Currently, they have glass in their pool, which is not something fun to come back from. It's a whole drain and re refill and rebalance project. So I don't quite know if they're going to be. Mm -hmm. Oh, they just announced, but we need this market. That's happened several times this summer in Wisconsin, where 
basically if you have broken glass on pool deck or someone's bringing it in and it's into the pool, that's what you have to do. Like drain the entire pool, vacuum, chop back everything up, and then you start the process. So it's like a two week loss over a you know a hundred day season. We look at it as a hundred day sprint. Uh we're really tired at this point from <laughs> the, the sprinting and the running with the operating of the pool, but I think to Missy's credit that, you know, one of the great things about having a pool is that we take our kids that are in our park and rec after school program, they get to middle schoolers and all of a sudden they're 14 and now they can come into concessions mm -hmm. and then they go to concessions and, and in admissions and they hopefully learn a little customer service skills and then we Missy trains them because, of course, she's got her training certification, and then they become lifeguards, and then they, you know, they move on and use us as a reference, and they are, they're on their way, and then they, you know, get married and have kids and somehow move back to Minnesota, which now we, we are having former employees from, you know, 2010 to 2012 that are raising their families. My 10-year-old just said that she wants to be a camp, camp counselor when she goes yeah. to be oh. tired. Already on the dot. <laughs> uh, I got to give kudos to staff on uh, two different today though because we did have two different emergencies happen under our watch today a non-major um, medical emergency with a broken arm in summer camp this morning falling off playground equipment and they just had an employee who uh, went unconscious in the concession stand so she did not get transported by EMS but they are going to the hospital with their parents as well so staff on both occasions handled two really stressful situations to the TM, how they're supposed to do it, while the health department of all people are down to unfold and watching it all unfold. So you can only add so much stress into a day that like really did happen. So that's actually a lot of sleep. So we have lots going on, but staff really handled it perfectly. So I'm very, very proud of them. Yeah. Kudos to you guys. Yeah. yeah. For being a top of change staff. It's been a day. Hi, <laughs> yay. Um, National Line Out last night. Uh, coordination with a lot of other city departments, the turnout, uh, weather. Um, next upcoming special event in the city would be the Rock and Blues Marathon. That's on August 31st, Saturday. Uh, that'll start and end in Monona. Um, we have our monthly meetings with our special events. Uh, coordination regarding those events. And so be prepared for that. Last day of the pool is the 25th. We roll over um the fall programs and if you haven't there's a date let's see for October the 12th. open house at oh, maywood oh, okay. i um, thought you were gonna say fall festival no fall, yeah. fall festival the 29th or 30th i'm sorry i can't remember that it's an open house, the open house at maywood if you want to you know what was that? the 29th or 30th oh, the email, but we'll email we'll out we're gonna show all the parents around we're very excited to announce that we're able to take ACH payments, so parents won't be getting convenience fees, and you won't be getting convenience fees anymore. So that's been almost a six-month struggle to get set up with our system, which is awesome. So they're going to also be able to sign up for ACH payments and just check out and see what's going on. Do you guys know is Chili Fest going to be the same as Fall Fest, or is it the 28th? October 28th? Uh, September 28th. Adam, you still have to Is it Chili Fest? Chili Fest. Chili Fest. Chili Fest. And then I'm getting my LGIT, so I've got my third instructor certification, and I'm going for my instructor trainer certification at the end of the month in Verona, which is really exciting. It does not come into Wisconsin very often. We were able to get six people per class, which is going to uh, open up more life for classes. And we are in construction season in North Cliff, Wells Park. So if you haven't right. seen the uh, Hamburg big. Equipment is over in the park, and we've started with um, concrete removal around the, the Schaefer shelter, um, kind of all the pre-construction stuff, tree protection, inlet protection, you know, all the um, permit grading, sewer so saw cutting out part of Greenway today. So uh, that'll be ongoing. Um, we kind of hit a window where um, we wanted to start early because it's like a four to six week project, give or take. Um, that we would have minimal disruption once the school year starts and there's really no good time kind of was looking projecting with the weather forecast and the usage at the pool like kind of down it's been you know cooler um although now it's picked back up again the last couple of days but uh so that's exciting um we'll keep you apprised if anything you know major turns up but uh, 
should be on on course for this fall. Yeah, because softball has been making a little bit of a comeback. They were loud. They, <laughs> they were loud. Uh, so <laughs> sort of, there are um, a rebirth of some younger teams. Of, uh, it seems that the last several years, some big um, MG students have just graduated and put the other teams. And so uh, I think there was more teams and we were able to repurpose um, some some of our our games this summer at the field. So the goal is that, that this year we're going to be rocking and rolling uh, four or five nights a week um, at that facility. Hmm. All right, anything else? else? Then a motion to adjourn. Can I just real quickly spam down the end all? Um, sure. Your garden is scheduled for tomorrow night. The rain is in the forecast, but right. <laughs> so we'll make a call uh, um, quiet noon tomorrow mm -hmm. if it's going to be honored or not. If, if we do have to change it, we will reschedule for the following Thursday. At what time? At, um, the start service year at five. And um, the baby starts um, six to eight. Yes. And then um, the um, the wrestlers tomorrow are, are doing hot dogs and, and broths, and we're trying to do so. The rain day would work for them if we have to cancel. So that's there. And then the um, celebration on the shore fund, fundraiser that is our big fundraiser. And for those who don't know, all of the operating costs for San Damiano are paid by Friends of San Damiano. We are built by the city and pay the city for any any services there. So um, these fundraisers are hugely important, not just for operating the the um, property or for operating costs, but also fundraising for the purchase of the of the property and what happens in the future. So any support is. Um, appreciated. Um, right now for the celebration on the shore, we have stopped sales of the tickets because they are sold out. Um, I, there may, I, there will be a few tickets coming up because people buy whole tables as sponsors and not all those seats get used. So we're hoping by the end of next week we'll know how many of those seats are open. But anyway, it's, um, yeah, yeah, we're really thrilled with the um, support for that. Anyway, update there. Okay. All right. Uh, is there a motion to adjourn? To adjourn? Sorry, sorry. Oh, you start oh. your own motion. <laughs> oh, okay. You say I. I, I. We are adjourned. Thanks, you guys. That's, we're up nine minutes, uh, ten minutes.